Hello, Miss Ulma and uh, Miss Carmen. How are you? Hello, teacher. Good evening. Good evening. Ready? Yes. Yeah, that's the attitude. That's the attitude. That's the attitude. Okay. Mr. Luis. Hello, sir. Thursday, all right. So two more classes and the week is over. <laughs> all right. Miss Hulma, you, you, you have good company. I can see that. You know, your pets, your cats over sí. there. Sí, no me deja estar aquí en la clase, siempre tiene que estar aquí. <laughs> aquí se echa y peor que encima del cuaderno que estoy anotando, se viene. <laughs> yeah, you're, se you're, pone bravo cuando lo quito, me muerde. He wants attention, you know, he wants attention. <laughs> yeah, that's what happens over there. Okay. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna wait like one or two minutes before we start this. In the meantime, let me get the uh, that presentation ready. So just one second over here. Hi, teacher. Hello, sir. How are you? Fine, thank you. I Good. Have a question. Yes, sir. <laughs> On the platform. Yep. Eh, tarea 7, ejercicio 4. Hay que hacer una reestructuración de la oración. Entonces ahí aparece, how much cost is this? Remember that uh, this can be a bottle, this can be a cell phone, or this is, is an object. So you have to use das because it's something. All right. <coughs> You know, someone asked me uh, a question about it, you know, about the same thing, all right? So I know what you're talking about, okay? So I know what you're talking about. Hold on, please. Yes, le, ya, la tare, tarea mm -hmm. Yeah. Sí, de hecho, ya, ya me había consultado de esa, entonces ya, ya sé la, lo que usted me está, está refiriendo. Okay. Uh, let me just one moment, please. Yeah, okay. so yeah, this one, right? How much uh, cost? Yeah, but yeah, but remember that you so you 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 start with how much, okay. and then and then all right, and then you need a, the auxiliary. So what's the auxiliary? Does. Does. So or exactly. So how much? How much does? Does this? Uh huh. How much cost? No, how, how much? much does this? Oh. This is the subject. All right. This cost. Like that. Exactly. And the last one, Mr. Lewis. Uh, where do you eat lunch? Exactly. You don't have to restructure the question. All you have to do is to write it with the correct grammar. So adding the auxiliary do or does. That's all you have to do. All right. Yes. Okay, so number four is how much does this cost? How much does this cost? Correct. Yes, sir. Okay. You, you don't have to change the order on this one. You just have to add the auxiliary. Number three? Yeah. How, number so how three, many people? How, how many two. people does she supervise? Two. Correct. Does because you're talking about she, right? The subject is she. Ah, sorry. Does she supervise? Does she supervise? You don't have to change the order. You just have to use the auxiliary. Okay. Okay. That's the only thing, right? Vice it, this one, this one is going to be wrong because I forgot to include the question mark. So that's why. And this one, how many people does she supervise? Okay. It's because of, because of the spelling. You see? <clears throat> okay. Mm -hmm. Let and me tell you. Re ready. All right. Yes, so let me tell you that this spelling, o sea, la forma de letrear, supervisar, esto es en inglés británico, con una S, en inglés americano se hace con una Z, you do it with a Z, 
So that's what I wrote it down with a Z over there. And both are okay. O sea, que usted puede escribir supervise con S o con Z. And both are okay. Uh, All right? Uh -huh, yes. Uh -huh. But in this case, since it's a exercise, you have to include, you have to write it down with an S. Okay. So okay. that's why. Thank you, okay. teacher. You're welcome, sir. So let me start sharing this screen now. Does anybody okay. else have any question uh, about the platform that I can help you with right now? ¿Alguien tiene alguna consulta de la plataforma que podemos evacuar? ¿Alguna duda? No questions right now. No? Okay. That's great. So no problem right now. So uh, as I said yesterday, uh, tonight we will, uh, let's see, we will study the simple pass with affirmative statements, negative statements, with yes, no questions. We, we will accomplish some listening activities. Grammar part, we will cover the uh, pronunciation of regular verbs. I will give you a list of verbs, regular and irregular verbs. So there are many tasks to complete this uh, in this case, okay? But before we start with the class, we need to do a review, all right? I think it's important to do a review, but as I promised you last time, Let's start with the word of the evening, okay? Let's start with the word of the evening. And that's the one. Comenzamos con la eh, palabra de la noche o el vocabulario de la noche, all right? Since we are going to be talking about the past, I thought it was going to be, uh, or I thought it was a, a good idea to, uh, to share with you an expression to use when you uh, meet people, uh, or you see someone that you have that you haven't seen for for a quite long period of time. Esa palabra tiene relación, verdad, cuando usted se encuentra una persona que no ha visto en siglos, okay, o en un largo tiempo. Ese es el contexto. You know, this is the context of, of this word that I have of this phrase. So the word of the day, Thursday, April twenty second, twenty twenty one. Long time no see. That's the phrase in English. It means, uh, simply means that it has been a long time since you last saw someone. Que ha sido un tiempo bastante extenso desde la última vez que usted eh, se encontró a alguien o vio a alguien. So you would say this directly to them either in writing on the phone or when you do finally see them. Esto se lo puede escribir a alguien por escrito o por teléfono, se lo puede decir. O usted se lo puede decir cara a cara cuando ya encuentra la persona, right? So when you see the person face to face. So long time no see, right? Long time no see. For example, hi, John. Long time no see. We should meet up soon, okay? Y no es que la gramática esté incorrecta, so this is, uh, I mean, remember that this is, like we say, caliche, right? Or slang, or like we say, idioms, tipos dichos. So uh, what, what I'm saying is that you said that way, long time no see, okay? Long time no see, all right? It's slang of the day. And then we have, um, we say this when we meet people after not seeing them for a long period of time, okay? Como les dije, verdad? Decimos esta expresión o la usamos cuando nos encontramos a alguien Después de un periodo muy largo de tiempo. Okay. And the conversation over here states, Hi, Mark. Long time no see. How are you? Hey, Mark. ¿Cuánto tiempo sin verte? Okay. O hace siglos que no te, que no te veía o no lo veía. How are you? Hey, Sarah. What's happening? Long time no see. Hey, Sarah. ¿Qué hay? ¿Verdad? O ¿Cómo le va? ¿Verdad? Eh, hace mucho tiempo, ¿verdad? Que no, no, no la veía. Okay, eh, Maria, my God, okay, long time no see, you look so different, ¿verdad? Eh, Maria, qué sorpresa, ¿verdad? Entonces, encontrármela o, o, o verla. Eh, usted se uh, luce diferente. So, wow, I didn't expect to meet you here. Eh, no esperaba encontrármelo o encontrarla aquí. Long time no see, buddy. Eh, Hace tiempo eh, sin, 
sin vernos, ¿verdad? Entonces, amigo, buddy is like a friend of yours, right? Entonces la frase long time no see, usted lo puede decir tanto tiempo, cuánto hace que no nos vemos o cuánto tiempo, right? O si usted quiere ser un poquito más eh, folclórico, puede decir dichoso los ojos que te ven. <laughs> All right. So you can say that. That's, that's the actual meaning over there. Okay. So long time no see. Like imagine that we meet again after, let's say, uh, two weeks. I, I, I can tell you, hey, long time no see. ¿verdad? Tiempo sin vernos. Así sería una traducción eh, adecuada. Okay. So that would be a good translation about that expression. All right, so let's continue. So since we're, we will uh, talk about the past, I think uh, that's a great idea, all right? But to review what we did yesterday uh, about the WH questions in simple present, there is a 10 question quiz that I want you to take right now individually. I will share the link with you so you can take it right away. Para comenzar la clase, vamos a hacer un repaso del presente simple, preguntas abiertas. Entonces, esto consta de 10 uh, preguntas. Les voy a compartir el enlace en un instante. Ok. So, it's multiple choice and it's going to be similar as this. As you can see, you have many languages do you speak. How, why, where, or what. Maybe what many languages do you speak or how many languages do you speak. And all you have to do is to click on one of the options over there. Okay? Just like that. All right, so let's begin with that. So good evening, everyone. And the ones that are just joining that class, we will start with a review about WH questions in the simple present. Okay? In a, in a multiple choice quiz. Vamos a comenzar con un repaso, un breve quiz o laboratorio de 10 preguntas, opción múltiples, in, de forma individual. All right? And if you like, you can share the score with me, but I'm going to know, right? I'm going to find out. Si gusta, com comparte el score. Aunque okay, ya los tengo ahí cuadriculados porque voy a, voy a, voy a tener acceso, ¿verdad? <laughs> a su puntaje. <laughs> okay. All right. So just one second come over here. Um, hold on, please. Let, let me get the, um, the information ready for you. All right. So just one moment over here. Let me wait uh, like one more minute so that uh, more people join that class, all right? Let me just one second over here, guys. Let's take advantage of these uh, couple of minutes before I wait uh, for more people to join the class in case you want to ask me any questions about the platform. Podemos utilizar este par de minutos hasta tipo ocho y cuarto para ver si ustedes tienen alguna consulta con la plataforma. Okay. So just one second. Okay, one second. I'm generating the uh, information to share uh, the quiz with you, all right? Um, just one moment. Okay, so I just sent to you the uh, quiz. All right, I think it's loading right now. Yes, there you go, all right. Let me know if the system asks, I don't know, for, for confirmation to log in, ¿verdad? Me, me avisan si el sistema les pide, no sé, algo para que ustedes ingresen como usuario o algo. No sería necesario, la verdad. Okay. Pide correo electrónico. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. I mean, that's okay. <clears throat> 
don't worry about it. I use this um, this tool in classes, you know, for my uh, high school students, and there's no problem at all over there. Yeah, I can't tell you that. You know, you can trust. Okay, you can trust that place. All right, where they confia the edge. All right, because this is for educational purposes. confines educativos. All right. Right, so let me know when you're ready, please. Teacher, una yes. yes. Ahí me, ya me metí, pero dice que en empresa o en escuela o familiar a uh, escuela ponga y, y ponga su él puede poner inglés corporativo si gusta o, o le puede poner no sé algo distinto una x o algo solamente eh, como esto es por, por cuestiones educativas uno tiene que tener registro por eso es que se hace no una opción es poner el... perdón mister César uh -huh. no la opción es como de poner el queso que es si es escuela o si uno es estudiante o maestro. No sé si es mi, creo que es mi conexión que está inestable. Eh. Perdón que mi, mi conexión está inestable, entonces. Sí. Teacher está pidiendo actualizar ¿qué dice? los detalles de fecha de nacimiento. Bueno, puede poner algo genérico, no es necesario de que usted ponga información real, ¿verdad? Lo único real es, es su correo. ¿verdad? Lo demás puede ser, usted puede poner que es de primer grado, eh, no importa. ¿okay? Solo para que le dé acceso. Eh, eh, está un poco lento mi, mi Gaby mi ¿Cuál es mi contraseña de Gmail? Si sí, no se puede, no se preocupen eh, Vamos a dejarlo para más tarde o para otro día o si no hacemos, hacemos otra actividad alterna. Dígame. Dice ingresar, ingresar un código para unirse al. Es el que les compartí en. en sí, a mí en... también me pidió un código. Dicho. Vaya, se los voy a, se los voy a compartir ahorita. Aquí en lo... el WhatsApp. Sí. All right, here we go. Este proceso que están haciendo ustedes solamente la primera vez que se unen, que se unen a esta plataforma. Ok. Ahorita se los estoy compartiendo. Ahí está. Ese es el código. En el screen appear me. You are yeah. playing with Tony Cabrera, César Rivera, Edwin Daniel Sevillano. Yeah, those are our friends. It's correct. This yes, sir. It is the people in this class, sir. Yes, correct. Y en esta parte, ¿cómo procedemos, teacher? Uh, ¿En cuál, perdón? Ya cuando estamos dentro y, bueno, mi pantalla parece morada, Selección pero... Selección de tema, dice. La presería uno día dos. Vaya, vale, permítame. Aquí, mire. Eh... All right, perdón. Sí, es que me parece lo mismo también jugadores yes
Ok, si no se puede, eh, per, permítame. Si no se puede, sí. porque no me parecen que ustedes ya están inscritos acá, fíjense. Entonces, eh, permítame. All right. A mí me parece, me sale. ¿Puedo compartir? Ya, yeah, go ahead. Me, me parece esto. Un poco, señora. Uh -huh. Parece Gilberto. Ajá, exacto. Sí, son, su, son, son, son su, sus compañeros. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, that, yeah, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. These are your, your classmates. Oh. Right. Teacher. Yes. Y ahorita que tengo que hacer, porque a mí me parece también la misma pantalla del compañero Tony. Lo que pasa. Tengo que coger un jugador. No, 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 no. Este. Eh, les voy a compartir otro código para ver si, si ustedes ingresan con, con el otro código. Solamente ingresan y de una sola vez les va a dar acceso. En teoría, si no funciona, saltamos esto, ¿verdad? Porque está dando mucho, mucho problema. Lo que pasa es que mi, mi internet está un poco lento. No sé. Pueden este, en la misma plataforma ingresar ese código. Si no, no se preocupen. Vamos a, a dejar esta actividad y, y voy, a, voy a trabajarla un poquito más. Okay. Vamos. Yes, I have, yes, I have Gilberto Mendoza. I have it in the class already. I have Edwin, Edwin Daniel. Okay. Les mandé otro código y con ese código pueden ingresar, por favor. ¿Verdad? Entonces, ahí tenemos a Eduardo. Ok. Ok. Eh, Cesar, eh, Zulma, thank you. Right. Sí, les pido disculpas que la primera vez que uno ocupa esto, eh, tiene que registrarse y pasar por esos filtros, ¿verdad? Entonces... Pero ya cuando lo sigamos ocupando, ¿verdad? Este va a estar abierto. All right. One more minute, please. One more minute. Yo no puedo personalizar. <laughs> ok. Pero ahí está. No logro yeah. entrar. Teacher, le estoy metiendo el código, pero no logro entrar. Me pide que me registre, ya inicié con mi cuenta y no me vuelve a poner la pantalla donde pregunta cuál es el uso y, y así. Intente con el código que le estoy mandando ahorita, por favor. Si no, sí. si no yo... Con... Bueno, sí, le estoy mandando el código otra vez. Este... Si no se puede, no se preocupe. Yo se los asigno esto como práctica extra después de la clase. La cuestión está repasar, ¿verdad? Para que ustedes lo hagan en su tiempo. Teacher, okay. yo ya me logré meter, pero no sé eh, en qué cuáles debo seleccionar. O, o, o no sé. ¿Cómo Porque seleccionar? Se me, fue, se me fue el Inter cuando usted me estaba explicando, entonces me vine para la sala. Sí, este, bueno, ahorita solo tengo de participantes a eh, Susana, Saraí, Zulma, Gilberto, César, Edwin, Claudia, Eduardo. Ok. Son los Ajá. únicos que tengo. Eh, usted todavía, no, como la sacó, tiene que ingresar otra vez con el código que puse ah, el, por, aquí, ¿verdad? Lo voy a mandar. Uh -huh. eh, es el 70-64-35. Dele clic uh -huh. al código que está en el WhatsApp y e ingrese. Y en teoría tendría que de, darle acceso, ¿verdad? Entonces. Ah, ok. Ok. Voy a esperar. Yes, yes. I'm sorry. Can you, can you see me? Because I'm inside the... Inside the... The game. The team, but uh, I appear that like it's Baleowu. Okay. <laughs> right. 
Puede checar en teoría. Yo creo que ya ingresé. No sé si me lo grabé. Yeah, I mean, the, the people I have are, are uh, Sonia, Susana, Ay. Zulma, Gilberto, Flor, Saraí, Cesar, Edwin, Frank, Susana, Claudia, and Eduardo. Those are the only ones I'm showing right now. In the same, in the same code, I sent a second code, but envié un segundo código. Este es 70, 70, 6435, 74, uh, se, I'm sorry, 706435. So that's the one I shared with you. Yes, sir, I have a question. Yes, sir. Eh, esos nombres que mencionó son todos o hay más? No, son los, son los únicos. Es que no, yo aparezco como Tony Cabrera, pero no escuché que lo mencionara. Pero en el segundo código, eh, Mr. Alfonso. Eh, no, yo estoy en el 567-586. No, 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 70. Man, revisa el WhatsApp, ok. Lo que pasa es que ese no dio problemas. El segundo sí. Pero fuiste por otro lado, Tony. Sí, sí. Este, vaya, voy a compartir pantalla. Lo que pasa es que. Eh, por cuestiones de, de que nosotros nos dicen de que no ocupemos eh, cuestiones de terceros, aunque esto es educativo, yo sé que no va a pasar nada, pero uno siempre tiene ese temor. Pero ahorita ya me la ingenié. Ok, aquí está. ¿Alcanzan a ver? Sí, dice Alfonso. Sí, sí, sí. So that's the one. So, ¿Cómo so, puedo hacer para ingresar? Vaya, lo, lo, lo que hago yo es, les doy aquí en este enlace, ¿verdad? Se los copio y directamente, permítame. Se los, se los envío a WhatsApp, ¿ok? Y o usted ingresa por el, por el, por el código, right? Y este es el código, ¿verdad? Ok. Yeah, that's the one. So the people I'm showing right now are Carmen, Sonia, Susana, Flor, Frank, Sarai, Susana, and these are the ones, all right? Vamos a darle y podemos practicar hasta, hasta dos veces hasta que podamos usar esta, esta cuestión, ¿verdad? Eh... I'm going to begin the game right now. All right, Tony. There you go, sir. There you go. That's you. I see. All right. There you go. All right. Okay. Let's begin. I apologize for for you know the long wait. Okay. Let's just start. No me puedo meter al quiz. Ya vamos a practicar otra vez para, para que usted lo, lo pueda hacer. En este usted tiene control del juego, ¿verdad? Entonces no, no necesitaría eh, compartir pantalla, ¿verdad? Entonces de eso se trata. Susana Flores almost finishes already. I can see that. All right. Eduardo has answered uh, most of them.
All right, so let me know when you finish, please. I'm finished. You think you finished, Miss Sonia? Okay. All right. Sorry, teacher. I can't <laughs> do it. You couldn't play. No puedo jugar. You couldn't play. Finish, your teacher. All right, thank you, sir. Yeah, it's only, it was only 10 questions over there. Okay. Ahorita me aparece la ronda de preguntas. Yeah, yeah, you're right. So let's try to review this then. Vamos a repasarlo. Solo eran 10, ¿verdad? Yes, it's only 10. Okay. Yeah, it's only 10. Yeah, you see, I, I want to say first play, First place was Susana Flores, second place, Mr. Gilberto, and third place, Miss Sonia Lasso. All right. Frank got 100%, Tony 90%, Miss Carmen 90%, Gilberto 100%, Susana Flores 100%, and Sonia 100%. I can see that. ¿Verdad? Lo que el sistema me presenta en estos momentos. All right. Teacher, yo lo finalicé ya hace unos minutitos, pero me mandó para otro, para otras 10. Pero oh, no okay. Sé. Vale, ahorita vamos a revisar la, la, las, las preguntas, ¿verdad? Entonces me dice que la... Solo voy a incluir algo por acá y a compartir pantalla. All right. And uh, here we go. It says that the uh, toughest question is, do you... Uh, this one, right? That one, right? So that's the toughest question. Because I have eight players answered this uh, correctly and two players got it answered where. And for this one says, who do you play bas basketball with? If the question has with at the end, you need to use who, all right? En este caso, le están preguntando con quién usted juega, ¿verdad? No le estoy, no estamos preguntando quién juega basketball, okay? So that's a difference, that's a difference. Estoy, como que yo le preguntara a Mr. Alfonso, or Tony, right? Like right now, <laughs> Mr. Tony, right? So, sir. Who do you play basketball with? Con quien juega basketball? Y usted me va a decir, I play basketball with my brother, my son, my friends. Okay. Otro caso sería que en la casa, en su casa, at your home, Mr. Tony, who plays basketball? And then you, you can tell me nobody plays basketball or I or me, right? You can say I play basketball or only me, right? That's a difference, right? So that's a difference. Okay. So... I want to show you the, the uh, questions over here. Uh, this one was difficult. And then we have, I always play basketball with Sam, right? Who do you play basketball with? Si está, la, si, si lo, va a ser pregunta, okay? Y, y, y ya tiene usted la respuesta, dice, I always played basketball with Sam. La pregunta sería, who do you play basketball with? Con quien juega basketball? No sería, who likes playing basketball with you? No. What do you practice? En este caso le están preguntando con quién juega, right? Who do you play basketball with? No, no le están preguntando quién le gusta jugar basketball. Okay? So that's why on, 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 on that one, all right? And on this one, out of you, my friends, 71% of you got it correct. Significa que el 71% de la clase lo obtuvo correcto, all right? Out of 14 players. And this one, it says, I usually watch the soccer game. What was the question? How often? When you have questions about the frequency, cuando usted quiere saber la frecuencia, va a preguntar how often. Okay? How often or how often uh, do you watch the game? And you, you answer, I usually watch the soccer game. Okay? 
let's see over here. I love swimming and hiking. Pero vamos a revisar las preguntas aquí, ¿verdad? ¿Cómo están? Let me just one sec. Uh, there you go. All right, so questions. And we got a question over here. I'm going to give you the answer. So the first one was, what do you like to do in your free time, right? So it was, what do you like to do in your free time? Okay. So the uh, next one, um, sorry. So how many languages do you speak? This one, right? Uh, the next one, what time do you start work? ¿Verdad? A qué horas? Okay. So what time do you start work? The next one, uh, who do you play basketball with? La que ya habíamos mencionado. I always play basketball with Sam. And the question is, who do you play basketball with? I usually watch the soccer game. And the question is, how often do you watch the game? Uh, I love swimming and hiking. What sports do you like? No le estamos preguntando cuándo, right? So it's when do you like sports? No. Do you like sports? Yeah, you can say, yes, I love swimming and hiking. Pero ahí, si sería eso, te, le hace falta el yes or I love swimming and hiking. So the correct question would be, what sports do you like? And then you answer, I love swimming and hiking. Next one. We practice on Monday and Saturday. So when do you practice? Remember that when they ask about the days, you need to ask when. When you ask about the time, like the hour, the specific hour, you need to ask what time. Okay, so if I ask you what time do you start classes, that what time does the English class, classes start? You can say at eight o'clock or eight p.m. All right, or when do you have classes? And you you can say every day because in this case it's when. All right. Next one. What are W H question words? Guess cuáles son las W H question words? Is it how, am, where, do, or where? Or where, why, when, do, or does? Or where, why, what, who, how, and when? ¿Verdad? Las preguntas de información. WH questions. So, okay. Next one. Um, so, who does your sister do exercise? Ahí vamos a ver. Or where does your sister do exercise, right? Whose is the quien, right? Whose means the quien, all right? We haven't covered that one yet. Okay. And uh, I think that's the last one over there. Okay, I have the score thing here. Would you like me to show you the scores? Quisieran que les mostrara el puntaje. Or you know it already. Or you say, I passed, teacher. No, don't do it. <laughs> Pass, <all> right? <laughs> Pass, right? <laughs> okay, yeah. I'm going to respect your privacy, okay? Let me respect, respect your privacy. That's a review, right? It was just a review. Okay. Um. So now the next thing that we will do uh, is the following, my friends. I'm going to take you back to your childhood memories. Vamos a regresar el tiempo, ¿verdad? Y vamos a regresar a la niñez. With these traditional games, all right? We were genius and we didn't know, right? Éramos genios y no sabíamos. Take a look at this, all right? Traditional games of El Salvador. All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, you know, marbles. All right. If you are the type of person lucky enough to play this game. All right. So let's welcome back your uh, childhood memories. Okay. You were not a kid if you didn't do this calculation, right? I got this from a meme, right? Lo saqué de un meme, por cierto, ¿verdad? No tuviste infancia, ¿verdad? Si usted no hizo este cálculo. All right. <laughs> so that's what I'm saying over there. Maybe yes, right? Maybe no. All right. As a, as a uh, gentleman, I can tell you we did that. All right. Take a look at this. Okay. Kids playing, you know, in there. All right. So two kids playing chivolas or marbles uh, in there, right? In the dirt, in la tierra. What about this one? How do you call this game? Arranca cebolla. Arranca cebolla, right, correct. So we have capirucho, chivolas, uh, El Salvador traditional games like trompo. You know, those are traditional games. Um, and uh, I'm going to 
maybe you can read this, maybe you can not, uh, but if you're able to, uh, to read this, can I have a volunteer please who can uh, help me read this introduction, all right? Remembering is to return to live, right? Recordar es volver a vivir. That's what we have, this expression mother. Or at least that's what my great-grandmother used to tell me with a smile on her face. O, o por lo menos es lo que mi eh, bisabuela uh, solía decirme con una sonrisa en su cara. Okay, that's what I'm saying over there. Can somebody help me please read this paragraph, if you don't mind? Pues, Alguien me ayuda, por favor. Can somebody help me? Okay, yeah, I know. Eh, está un poquito... Let me zoom it, all right? I'm going to zoom it. What about now, Miss Susana? Better now? Yo sé que está cortado, pero yo voy a mover la pantalla. Yes. Yeah, I'm going yes. to move the screen for you. Start, please. Okay. First line? Yes, please. Okay. Remembering is to return to life, or at least that what my great grandmother used to tell me with a smile of, on her face. During our whole life, many memories come to our mind. People we once knew, place we once visit, visited. Yes. Inseparable, inseparable friends. Mm -hmm. Jokes. Jokes, jokes and games with our friends or classmates. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately. Unfortunately, times have changed and then games and the games are not the same in they were 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. Technology has taken over the phone. So in the form of a tribute. Hold on. I want to share. I want to share my top five of traditional games from El Salvador that when I was little, I used, I to, used play. to play. I used to play every afternoon. If you're from my generation, you will like them. You will like them over there. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. So I see, uh, I would say as an interpretation of which is what you just read right now, let me just explain this, right? Vamos a hacer una traducción más o menos, interpretación simultánea. Remembering our, our whole life, many memories come to our mind. ¿verdad? Recordando nuestra, toda nuestra vida, muchas memorias vienen a nuestra mente. Las personas que conocimos, so people we once knew, places we once visited, los lugares que alguna vez visitamos, inseparable friends, amigos inseparables, jokes and games with our friends, ¿verdad? Chistes o bromas y juegos con nuestros amigos or classmates o nuestros compañeros. Unfortunately, desafortunadamente, times have changed. Los tiempos han cambiado. And the games are not the same as they were 10 years ago. Y los juegos no son lo mismo de lo que fueron hace 10 años. Yo diría 20 years ago, right? Or 25 years ago. Okay? Um, technology has taken over the fun, ¿verdad? La tecnología se ha llevado el eh, uh, fan, 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 la diversión. Okay. Eh, so in the form of a tribute, como una forma de tributo, I want to share my top five of traditional games from Los Abuelos, ¿verdad? Como, una, como un tributo, que quiero compartir los cinco eh, juegos tradicionales del Salvador del tiempo cuando estaba pequeño. That when I was little. I used to play every afternoon. Solía jugar cada tarde de, lo, de los juegos que solía jugar cada tarde. So if you are from my generation, you will like them. Si usted de mi generación, ¿verdad? Eh, le, le van a gustar. So that's what I'm saying over there. So, and then we have uh, the games over there, a la víbora de la mar, to the sea viper, right? So, do you remember how to sing this, right? A la víbora, víbora de la mar. And then you go like that, right? <laughs> yeah, that was a good game. So, and then you have marbles, uh, trompo, uh, escondelero, and uh, the other one is Capirucho, all right? Yes, uh, one sec. All right. Perdón, que ha estado fallando el, un poquito el internet, entonces por eso de repente mejor me quedo callado. Uh, so those are the 12 five games, 
all right? Which we're gonna be reading in a second. Once we uh, study the simple past, the pronunciation, questions, and everything, we're going to read those games, all right? Para que usted ya lo pueda leer, verdad, de corrido, y ya pronuncie los verbos como tienen que ser, y todo eso, verdad? Esto va a ser lo último que vamos a leer y compartir, verdad? To, tonight or maybe tomorrow. So that's, that's the game. This is going to be the last thing we will do. But at least, like we said over there, right? Recordar es volver a nacer. You know, that's what we have over here. And that's what we say. You know, remembering is to return to, to, la, to live, right? Remembering is to return to live, right? Okay. That's just an introduction, my friends. All right? So let's get to work. And... Um, I have the presentation over here. So take a look, please. All right. The top eight leisure time activities in the United States. La, el top ocho de actividades de ocio en los Estados Unidos. Okay? So that's what we're saying over there. Read, watch TV, spend time with family, play sports, go to the gym, use the computer, go fishing, Go to the movies. Maybe now using the computer is not a leisure activity, right? It's part of our jobs, right? So la computadora ya no es un hobby, right? So it's it's part of the of our daily life. Okay. So check the activities you do in your free time. And for you, my friends, could you do a top three of the activities you do in your free time? In your notebooks. Podrían hacer un top three. Top three of your uh, activities you do in your free time. Like, write them down, please, and you can share them with me right now, all right? Uh, let me ask over here um, somebody uh, right here uh, just to ask a question over here, all right? Miss uh, Susana uh, Portillo, what is your top three of leisure activities that you do in your free time? If you have free time, of course, right? Si tenemos tiempo libre, all right? <laughs> My free time, I'm going to the gym. You go to the gym, all right? Yeah. Anything else? Yes. Watch TV, maybe? No. No. Read? Yeah. Read. Yeah. Uh, book the medicine. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. But that's related to uh, to your work, okay? But that's okay. <laughs> yeah, it's also, that's what I do, too. You know, I read books that relate to my work, all right? Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um. Yeah, you, this is in the United States, you know, go fishing. We don't really go fishing over here, right? You wouldn't say that, right? <laughs> no, we wish, right? All right. Um, let me ask somebody else uh, from the class over here. Uh, let's see. I'm going to ask you, Miss Carmen, right? What's your top three of uh, leisure activities, if you have? Well, I like spend time with my family mm -hmm. watch tv and use the computer and use the computers okay yes. all right yes. yeah okay nice thank you so much all right so um what are your favorite leisure activities okay you already uh shared with me some some uh, examples in there okay so now Listen and practice the following conversation. Did you do anything special? Did you do did you do anything special? Maybe for the holidays, you know, for the Holy Week. Is algo especial para Semana Santa? I'm asking you right now, right? Everyone, just to put this in context. So let's try to listen to this conversation um, right now. And this is between Rick and Meg. And they're gonna be talking about what they did if maybe they did something special, okay? I just wanna make sure that I'm sharing the uh, audio correctly. Just one moment, please. All right, here we go. Unit seven, we had a- Hold on. I need to uh, nap the volume. Great time. Page 44, exercise two, conversation. Did you do anything special? Part A, listen and practice. So, what did you do last weekend, Meg? Oh, I had a great time. 
I went to a karaoke bar and sang with some friends on Saturday. How fun! Did you go to Lucky's? No, we didn't. We went to that new place downtown. How about you? Did you go anywhere? No, I didn't go anywhere all weekend. I just stayed home and studied for today's Spanish test. Our test is today? <laughs> I forgot about that. Don't worry. You always get an A. Yeah, that happens with some students at the school. You know, they have no idea what we're doing over there, right? <laughs> it might happen, you know, to, um, to some people, right? But uh, this is just a big coincidence, all right? So, ladies and gentlemen, this is a conversation about the uh, simple past activities that were completed in this case. Things that uh, these people, Rick and Meg, did over the weekend. Uh, maybe uh, Meg did something special, but uh, we have Rick just stay home and study for the Spanish test. In your case, you stay home to study English, right? All right. So that's that's the case over there. So let me let me go over the uh, the pronunciation of this. And then I'm gonna ask you to practice uh, the conversation in person. But uh, before I ask you to practice, I'm going to explain the grammar and details about the simple past, all right? Mm -hmm. Primero voy a clarificar un par de puntos acerca de esta conversación y darles un par de tips o consejos para mejorar la pronunciación. So, what did you do last weekend, Meg? Let's try to do the right intonation, please. Vamos a hacer la intonación. And uh, my recommendation is, with your microphone muted, practice a conversation and repeat after me, please. Okay? Thank you. So what did you do last weekend, Meg? Oh, I had a great time. I had a great time. I went to a karaoke bar and sang with some friends on Saturday. How fun. Did you go to Lockheed's? No, we didn't. We went to that new place downtown. How about you? Did you go anywhere? No, I didn't go anywhere all weekend. I just stay home and study for today's Spanish test. Our test is today? I forgot about that. Don't worry, you always get an A. Okay? So that's, I would say, uh, a model uh, pronunciation about this. Now, let's get into details about this. Okay? So let me underline this. All right, this one. So, we have an affirmative statement in the past. So had is the past tense of have, all right? Had a great time. And remember that when you have a consonant and after that there is a vowel, we need to make a connection or a link sound. Cuando esté una consonante seguida de una vocal, all right? Hacemos la conexión de sonido or a link sound. That's what we do. Always, please. Cuando tenemos el mismo sonido, so when you have the sound repeated, so you just pronounce it once. No vamos a decir I went to. No, we say I went to porque está la T. You know, we have to two times. All right. I went to a karaoke bar and sang with some friends. Esta cantó o canté. You know, este es el pasado de sing. All right. With some friends on Saturday. Sang entre A y E. Uh, and to ask a question, yes, no question. Así como en presente decimos nosotros, do you, uh, uh, do you like uh, English, for example, right? Okay. This is the auxiliary for the past tense, right? Ocupamos did como auxiliar para hacer yes, no questions, right? So that's what we do. And then we have, no, we didn't. And what's the negative contraction is didn't, right? Did not. We went to that new place. ¿Verdad? It is go, all right? Go, go. El pasado de go is went, all right? So that's the one I'm talking about. So we went to that new place downtown. Fuimos al centro, right? Downtown. How about you? ¿Qué tal usted o qué tal tú? Did you go anywhere? Regla de oro, it's a golden game. When you make a question in English, the verb never changes. Cuando usted hace una pregunta en inglés, el verbo no lo, no lo modifica, ni en presente, ni en pasado, ni en futuro, ni en ningún tiempo gramatical. 
the verb never the, the verb never changes in a question and the past is not an exception okay so did you go anywhere no vamos a decir did you went anywhere no did you go anywhere okay and it's the same structure as a question ¿verdad? ¿Cómo es la estructura de una pregunta you have the auxiliary the subject and the main verb and then the rest is is is, is a story right or it's history you can say that uh no i didn't go anywhere all weekend another golden rule is when you ask question i'm sorry when you uh state a negative statement you do not modify the verb en negativos el verbo se mantiene verdad su forma básica so we can say in questions and in negative statements the verb never changes en preguntas y negativos nunca cambiamos el verbo okay se mantiene en su forma básica all right so we don't say I didn't went anywhere. No vamos a decir, I didn't went anywhere. We say, I didn't go anywhere all weekend. Right? I just stay home and study for today's Spanish test. Solo me quedé en casa y estudié uh, para el examen de español de este día. So, this is a regular verb. Estudiar es un verbo regular. And as I told you, uh, I think one of these days, para hacer un verbo en pasado, si el verbo es regular, solo le agregamos ed. Pero hay algunos verbos que terminan en Y y modificamos esa Y por una I y agregamos ED. En study is one of these verbs that I talked to you about. So, our test is today. I forgot about that. ¿Verdad? Me olvidé de eso. I forgot about that. Si usted se olvidó pagar el recibo de la luz, right? If you forgot to pay the bill, the electricity bill, right? You can use this expression. I forgot about that. I forgot about that, ¿verdad? Se me olvidó. Forget es olvidarse, but this is the past. El presente es forget, all right? Forget, and that's the past, forget, okay? So, uh, don't worry, you always get an A, ¿verdad? No se preocupe, siempre se saca 10. Because in English, that's how you do it, right? A, B, C, and D, and F, right? Okay, but over here, we do something else. Any questions so far about this, all right? I will explain the grammar in detail in a couple of minutes. Ya vamos a, a, a explicar esto un poquito más de detalle. Okay? Esto solamente es una introducción, ¿verdad? To the simple pass over. La gramática en contexto. So that's what we're doing right now, studying the grammar in context. Okay? Any questions for me right now? Si alguien me confirma, maybe yes, maybe no. Eh, please. All right, so no questions. All right. All right, thank you so much. Okay. So now let's listen to the rest of the conversation. So what does Meg do on Sunday afternoons? All right. So what does Meg do on Sunday afternoon? I'm going to play the second part of the listening. And you uh, answer that question, please. What does Meg do on Sunday afternoon? Okay, so la tarde del domingo. All right. One second, please. Just one moment. Okay. One second, please. All right. Let me just try to find the conversation over here. Okay. All right, so here we go. So, um, conversation part uh, B, all right? So, just one moment, please. Let me just test it, okay? Page 59, exercise two, part B. Listen to the rest of the conversation. What else do you learn about Ashley? She won't tell you her age? No, that's not Page 96, exercise 9. Page 44, exercise 2, part B. 
Listen to the rest of the conversation. What does Meg do on Sunday afternoons? Yeah, that's the one. Okay. So, Meg, what did you do on Sunday? I stayed home in the morning. I just watched TV and read. How about in the afternoon? Oh, I worked. I have a part time job at the university bookstore. I didn't know you had a job. Yeah, I'm a cashier there. I work every Sunday from 2 to 5. Okay, that was very quick. You know, I thought it was going to be a little bit slowly, right? That was quick, right? It's just too bastante rápido. Okay, that was quick. So that actually gives me the opportunity to ask you the following. Okay, that gives me the chance to ask you the following. All right. So just take a look at my screen, please, over here. So let's try to practice this conversation in a breaker room. All right. At least one or two times. Once you finish, I will share with you the audio so you can complete part B in the group, you know, in the breaker room. All right. And in there, please take notes and uh, share with your classmates what uh, Meg did on Sunday afternoons because she did many things, right? Al parecer hizo varias actividades el domingo, right? Entonces, in the breaker room, all right, I will send you right now, los voy a enviar ahorita al, al grupo compartido, practicamos la conversación y luego les mando el audio para que lo escuchen con tiempo And then you write down the answers over there. Y escriben la respuesta, ¿verdad? Enumeran, si es posible, lo que hizo Mac. All right? It's okay. I know that uh, the uh, pronunciation of some uh, verse in past, okay, is, is, is new for you. But this is just an introduction. All right? This is just to practice. Okay? Vamos a pulir el oído un poquito. All right? Understood, everyone? Yep. Yes? Okay. Thank you. So I'm going to make the breaker room right now. All right. So just one second. I'm over here. All right. So let me just one second. I'm over here, please. All right, so rooms are open. Go ahead, please enjoy them, my friends. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. No tenemos conversación, teacher. Ya la no, mandó. No. Ya está en el grupo. It's in the chat. Ah, no. It's oh, in okay. the chat already, yes. Okay.
Eh, no. Si usted empieza usted con Nelson. Va, perfecto. Entonces, eh, empieza usted, Nelson, sigo yo como Mel. Ok, de acuerdo. <coughs> so, what Spanish test? Or test is today? I forgot about that. Don't worry, you always get an A. Okay. So, what did you do last weekend, Mel? Oh, I had a great time. I went to a karaoke bar in Sam with some friendly on Saturday. How fun! Did you go to Lucky? No, we didn't. We went to that new place downtown. How about you? Will you go anywhere? Okay. So, what did you do last weekend, Matt? Oh, I had a great time. I went to a karaoke bar and sang with some friends on Saturday. How fun. Did you go to Lucky? No, we didn't. We went to what that new place downtown. How about you? Did you go anywhere? No, I didn't go anywhere all the weekend. I just stayed home and studied for today, Spanish test. Our chat is today. I forgot about that. Don't worry, you always get an Don't, ¿Cómo se pronuncia ahí? Don't turn. ¿Cuál? Don't turn. Hello. Downtown. How are you teacher? Don't turn. Downtown, yes. How... Down, downtown. Downtown. Yeah. How about you did you go anywhere? No, I didn't go anywhere all weekend. I just stayed home and studied mm -hmm. for today's Spanish net test. Oh, well. this is today. I forgot about that. Don't worry, you always get an A. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's, that's, that's good, right? Okay. Así como iniciamos ahora. Okay. Mm -hmm. I am I'll be back, all right? No, we didn't. We went to that new place downtown. How about you? Did you go anywhere? No, I didn't go anywhere all weekend. I just stay at home and started for today Spanish test. Oh, uh, this is today. I forgot about that. Don't worry, you always get a A. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wish, right? We wish, right? We wish to be that smart. <laughs> yeah, we wish to get an A in English, right? But you can make it, right? You can make it. So I just shared with you the audio for part B. So it's in the chat already. Listen to the rest of right? the conversation. What does Meg do conversation? Take notes, please. What does Meg right? do on Sunday afternoons? Es una línea cada uno. Eh, si quieren una línea cada uno, primero, digamos, primero, eh, ¿cómo se llama? Eh, Alfonso. Primero Alfonso, luego or Tony, usted. or Mr. Tony. I think he likes better Tony, right? The Tony, the Tony, Tony Tiger. Tony Stark. Tony Stark. <laughs> yes, sir. Tony yeah. Tiger. Oh, so I, I, so I need to call you Iron Man then. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, uh, Iron Maiden. <laughs> oh, nice. All right. The order okay. is Raúl, Alfonso, and me. Okay. 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 You start, Raul. Okay, so what did you do last weekend, Meg? Oh, I had a great time. I went to a karaoke bar and sound with some friends on Saturdays. How fun! Did you go to Lucky? 
No, we didn't. We went to a new place in downtown. How about you? Did you go anywhere? No, I didn't go anywhere a weekend. I just started home and, and started for today's Spanish test. For tesis today, I forgot about that. Don't worry, you always get an A. Perfect. Nice. Alfonso, you, you see, you see it. Yes, sir. Oh, okay. So, what do you, what do you do last weekend, Meg? Oh, I had a great time. I went to a karaoke bar and sang with some <coughs> friends on Saturday. <coughs> Dímelo porque uno, ah, como que, ah, que sigue. Quiero ver, ¿verdad? Ajá. All right, hello. Yo mando el audio. Hello. Yeah, the audio is over there. It's on the chat already. Okay. Sí, ya. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Chequeo el audio. Sí, voy a salirme de la conversación y lo escuchamos. Bueno, lo voy a poner, no sé si ustedes alcanzan a oír. Exercise. No, I think everybody will play it individually. Solo nos ponemos en, en silencio para creo que cada quien lo escuchamos. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And then okay. uh, you give your, your, your opinion. Yeah. All right. Okay. okay. Thanks, teacher. All right. Ah, sí, yo no, no lo escuché. Hombre, yo lo escuché. Ah, espérame, voy a hacer una cosa. Me dicen si lo escuchan. Espérame. Exercise 2. Page 44. Exercise 2. Part B. Listen to the rest of the Meg do on Sunday afternoons? So, Meg. What did you do on Sunday? I stayed home in the morning. I just watched TV and read. How about in the afternoon? Oh, I worked. I have a part-time job at the university bookstore. I didn't know you had a job. Yeah, I'm a cashier there. I work every Sunday from two to five. Este bueno, solo a mí no me quedó que muy televisión. claro. Sí, no, no, no. Solo entendí lo de que vio televisión, pero de ahí no entiendo. Y algo <risa> el, el, hello, el, hello. El, el sábado estuvo en la casa. Stay home in the morning. Correct, correct, Miss Claudia. Uh -huh. Yes, correct. Esa es una, that's a distraction, ¿verdad? Esa es la trampa, ¿verdad? Que nos ponen para después lo, lo demás. La conversación, ¿verdad? Si se fija, la pregunta es que hizo el domingo en la tarde, ¿verdad? Y para distraernos en la conversación nos, nos dio información de lo que hizo el sábado. Uh -huh. No nos están preguntando, pero usted, sí. lo, pero usted lo captó. La trampa, sí. la cebollita, la cascarita, ¿verdad? Está ahí, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. Entonces... Y luego vio televisión. Yeah, that's on Saturday. Yeah, correct. That's on Saturday. Pero trabajó o But... no, no trabajó en la tarde. On Sunday afternoon. Yo, el domingo, sí. Sunday, yes. Ajá. Ajá. Ah, También, ah, bueno, no, yo... Parece ser bien malísimo, pero escuché la palabra children. No, 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 really. Si sé, nah, que verba. No, pero, pero, pero mire, pero sí mencionó algo con C, que es cashier. 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 Ah, es, es, ah pues cajera, quizás eso. Es cajera la muchacha. Cajera. Ah, okay. ah okay. Yes. por eso. Here. Ya tome nota de ah. esto, lo que cuando usted lo puso, eh, Mr. César. I have it here already. Ok. <laughs> I mean, yes, use words, pero utilicemos abreviaciones y cositas así para que no se nos eh, pierda la idea. Uh, mm -hmm. you, you can play it again, all right? You can play it again until you get all the details, ¿verdad? Hasta que obtengan toda la información, ¿ok? Ok. Yes, I'm going to be back. Entonces seguimos escuchando porque faltan yeah. las cosas. That's a, sí. Yes, correct. Yes. Uh, ok. Please. Eh. Page 44, exercise 2. Luki? No, we didn't. We went to the place that. 
ต้องทำฮาอาเป็นไงมอวิโออะกราเซียสเอ่อ did you go anywhere ¿En cuál iba? Eh, ay, 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 ya le encontré. Okay. No, no, I didn't go anywhere all weekend. I just stay home and study for today's Spanish test. Mm -hmm. Our test is late. I forgot about that. Don't worry. You always get an A. You always get an A, okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, that, was very, that was very good. So did you... Les hago la pregunta en pasado. Did you listen to the audio already? Ya escucharon el audio. Did you listen to the audio? Already? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. So, and my question to you is, what does she do on Sunday afternoon? Uh, stay home in the morning, watch TV and read. Um, the afternoon, I uh, your work. Mm -hmm. Um. To bookstore in, uh -huh. in the university from two to five. Yeah, and, and uh, what and in, mm -hmm. in part time? Yes. The, the two uh two to five. Yeah, she so she is a cashier at the university uh -huh. bookstore from two to five p.m. and uh, she has a, a part time job, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. correct. That's correct. Yes, you got it. Okay. So I'm going to close the rooms and we will come back in one minute. All right. Okay. 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 Thank you. You're welcome. All right, so welcome back everyone. Uh, can I have two volunteers who can practice this conversation in front of the class? Hold on, please. Let me, let me take a look at everyone more here. So I need Rick and Mac, all right? Yeah, right. teacher. Thank you, Ms. Ulma. And then who else? Mr. Caesar. Thank you, sir. Go ahead. So, uh, Cesar, you are Rake, and it's Sulma, you are Mac. Go ahead, please. Okay. So, what did you do last weekend, Mac? Oh, I had a great time. I went to a karaoke bar and sang good songs friends on Saturday. How fun! Did you go to Lucas? No, we didn't. We didn't. We went to that new place downtown. How, 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 pardon, how, how about you? Yes. Did you go anywhere? Mm -hmm. No, I didn't go anywhere I, all weekends. I just stayed home and studied for today's Spanish test. Oh, this all this is today. I forget about that. That. Don't worry. You always get an A. Thank you. Thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Caesar and Ms. Olma. So you always get an A. Um, siempre se saca una, le está diciendo ahí, ¿verdad? O siempre obtiene una. Okay. O siempre te saca 10, like we said in, over here, right? In El Salvo. Okay. Teacher, yes. ¿Cómo se pronuncia esa? How about you? Así. Sí, tiene que extender un poquito el how, como cuando decían supuestamente, ¿verdad? Los indígenas. How. <laughs> how. Ah. Right? Like that. All right. So, how uh, about, about you? How about you? How about you? Mm. How about you? Y de hecho hasta puede modificar lo, lo último, el about y el you. Puede decir usted, how about you, how about you. Así dice mucha gente. Pero si usted dice, how about you, perfecto. Ok. Ok. Yes. Gracias. All right. You're very welcome. Y uh, la palabra uh -huh. stay sería. Stay, yes. Stay. 
hay que hacer el esfuerzo stay. de pronunciar solamente la S. No, no hay que decir es, es, no, es stay, stay. Stay. O cuando dice la gente. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying that, right? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> Ok, so our test is today. Our, como que fuera la palabra hora, ¿verdad? Lo mismo se, se dice nuestro examen es este día, ¿verdad? O es hoy. Our, o, a, como hora también, ¿verdad? Si usted le pone una H, es hora. Y aquí es nuestro o nuestra. Ok. Our test is today. I forgot about that. Eh, olvidé o olvidar en pasado es forgot. Forgot. Ok. Olvidar. Right. Uh, so let's continue over here. So let's start with some, uh, if there are no more questions. Uh, no, I'm sorry. So what does Meg do on Sunday afternoons? Who can tell me, please? Who can give me the answer, please, of uh, the activities that Meg uh, does on Sunday afternoons? All right. Some, somebody, please. Miss Carmen Lisset, go ahead, please. Yes, Meg uh, has a part-time work at University Bookstore as yes. a cashier from 2 to 5 o'clock on Sunday. Yeah, that's actually perfect. Thank you so much. Uh, I want to give you the answer over here. I took notes, all right? And uh, if it's a little bit messy, it's because I took the notes over there, right? Okay? Like you said over there, Miss Carmen, So it says in the morning, she stays uh, home and just watch TV, all right? Just watch TV. Uh, and in the afternoon, she worked a part-time job at a university bookstore as a cashier from two to five, like you said over there, okay? So this is the answer. So my suggestion to you, everyone, is, is to take notes, uh, like uh, brief notes, right? Like main ideas and, and you don't have to write complete sentences in there. Otherwise, you're going to forget. Si escribe oraciones completas cuando toma notas, se le va a olvidar lo que están diciendo. Después arme el mensaje. You know, you put everything together over there. So let me, let me share this uh, with you through the chat right now. Okay? Les comparto. Por ahí me dijeron, ¿verdad? No vamos a mencionar nombre, ¿verdad? Pero eso es una broma lo que voy a mencionar. Que cashier era otra cosa, otra palabra, ¿verdad? <laughs> Okay, so um, let's continue over here. But that's okay. I mean, that's okay. This is a listening. And since we're just getting familiar with the past, uh, it's okay to make, to make mistakes over there. So I stay home in the morning. I just watch TV and just watch TV. Uh, on, on Sunday afternoon, I worked a part-time job at the uh, uh, university bookstore. Uh, I'm a cashier, she said, from two to five. And then if you, if you were to report this as, as he or she, si lo pusiera en tercera persona, tendría que decir, Meg or she stay home in the morning and just watch TV. Si gusta, hagamos la práctica, ¿verdad? Con su micrófono apagado. And just watch TV uh, on Sunday afternoon. Si ya quiere poner como párrafo, on Sunday afternoon y con signos de puntuación. On Sunday afternoon, I, uh, she worked part-time job at a university bookstore as a cashier. Something that we need to understand about the simple past is that it's the same verb. En, en el pasado, ahí no existe tercera persona, primera persona. El mismo verbo aplica para todo aquel que realice la acción o que realizó la acción. O sea, ahí no se va a modificar el verbo solo porque habla de él o ella. No, 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 ahí es lo mismo. Usted dice, I forgot to do the homework. O si dice eh, ella, she forgot to do the homework. The same pronunciation and the same verb. All right, same verb, okay? At least that's something good, all right? I shared with you this already to the uh, WhatsApp group. So let's continue, okay? So, unit seven. I'm sorry. Past time expressions yesterday, last week, last night, two years ago. In this moment, I'm going to give you an overview of the main three words to uh, make time expressions to talk, to talk about the past. Vamos a hablar de estas palabras, tres palabras principales para armar eh, expresiones de tiempo en el pasado. Okay? So these are the ones. So you have last, ago, and yesterday. 
So with this, I'm not saying that these are the only ones, ¿verdad? Con esto, o sea, no estoy diciendo que son las únicas, but these are the most common ones, pero son las más comunes, okay? So, I will send to you, uh, once we finish the class, today or early uh, in the morning, uh, the class that we covered uh, tonight, all right? Cuando termine la clase, yo le voy a mandar en formato PDF hasta la última diapositiva donde alcancemos a cubrir en formato PDF para que usted ya lo vaya armando. All right? So I will do that. Okay? So last, you say last night, last Sunday, last week, last weekend, etc. Ago, 10 minutes ago, an hour ago, three days ago. Yesterday, you say yesterday, yesterday morning, yesterday afternoon, yesterday evening, the day before yesterday. But what matters to me is how to use this, right? So, ¿cómo voy a utilizar el last? ¿Cómo voy a utilizar el ago? ¿Y cómo voy a utilizar el yesterday? Okay. For example, you can say, um, I, for dinner, right? You can say, last night for dinner, I had uh, a traditional meal. Usted puede decir, ayer en la noche, okay? O la noche pasada. Okay, last night. El las se le pone antes de, 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 de la expresión de tiempo que usted va a utilizar. Si usted quiere decir, ¿verdad? El fin de pasado, el, el fin de semana pasado, ¿verdad? Va a decir last weekend. All right. If you want to say el año pasado, you, you have to say last year. Ok. Si queremos decir, if you want to say la clase de ayer, you have to say last class. Ok. La última clase. Right. That's the minimum order. And these expressions, so these expressions can go or can start a sentence or if they can finish a sentence, all right? Usted comienza con la expresión de tiempo si quiere enfatizar, ¿verdad? El tiempo en que, en que usted realizó la acción o termina con, con la frase. Por ejemplo, si yo le digo, eh, ayer, all right, eh, cené, eh, digamos, una comida tradicional, ¿verdad? Un plato tradicional, ¿ok? You can say, Yesterday, I had a traditional meal for dinner, right? Comenzamos con la expresión de tiempo, ¿verdad? Yo sé que me pasé al yesterday over there, okay? Or you can say, last night, I um, studied the simple present tense, you can say. La, ¿Verdad? Ayer en la noche, o la última noche, o la noche pasada, okay? That's what you say over there. Le pone las para decir la última o eh, pasado, ¿verdad? El, el, el fin de semana pasado o el último fin de semana. That's what you say, Boda. Okay. And then the other one, you say a go. This one goes at the end. With this one, is the opposite uh, example, all right? Or it's a, they'll say a different structure. First of all, you have to mention the time expression. Con a go or a go, como dice mucha gente, a go, a go. Primero mencionamos el periodo de tiempo y luego mencionamos el ago. All right? A go goes at the end of the time expression. For example, uh, when did you practice the listening? ¿Verdad? ¿Cuándo practicamos el listening? Usted puede decir 10 minutes ago. Hace 10 minutos. El ago se traduce como hace, ¿verdad? Pero no de hacer, sino que de algo que ya pasó, ¿verdad? Que ya transcurrió, tiempo pasado. ¿Ok? So, When did you graduate from high school, verdad? ¿Cuándo se graduó usted de, de bachiller? <laughs> Iba a decir, Ooh. no, just kidding, right? Okay, uh, you would say uh, 10 years ago, right? Hace 10 años. Or 15 years ago, right? Okay. Or when did you get married, verdad? ¿Cuándo se casó? Si usted es afortunado o no sé. Um, so you can say uh, five years ago. Uh, 20 years ago, 18 years ago, y me dice, ¿verdad? Cinco horas, tres días y todo eso, right? <laughs> you, you cannot be too specific, right? <laughs> All right. Yeah. So, uh, so with a go, a go goes after the time expression, ¿verdad? Y puede ir al final o al principio de una razón. It could go at the beginning or at the end of a uh, sentence, okay? Any questions so far? Another question. Yes, sir. Eh, es, ¿Cómo decir? 40 años atrás. Comienza con, con la fecha, con el año. 
14 years ago. Correct. 40 years ago. Yes. 40 years ago. Correct. That's years. how you start. Years. Yes. 10 years ago. Okay. Uh -huh. La noche anterior, usted dice last night. Ahí es el contrario. Le pone last y luego el periodo de tiempo. O el día o, o lo que usted se está refiriendo. Con last eh, puede ir cualquier expresión. Porque usted puede decir hace una hora. Puede decir an hour ago. O, o last hour, ¿verdad? La última hora. Pero, pero si se fija, a go um, puede, puede ser con cuestiones chiquitas, ¿verdad? With short periods of, of time and with uh, long periods of time. You see? So it doesn't really matter. Okay. And then we have the other ones like yesterday. All right. We have yesterday. Um, yesterday morning, yesterday afternoon, yesterday evening. Solamente le está agregando o especificando si lo hizo en la mañana, en la tarde o en la noche o tarde noche. The day before yesterday is anti-ayer. Creo que así se dice en español, right? The day before yesterday, ¿verdad? El día antes de ayer. Es una traducción literal, ¿verdad? Anti-ayer. Right? But this is just an expression. You can say um, um, anything, right? You can say anything, but this is, these are the most common expressions over there. Okay, last and ago. O también puede ocupar de una sola vez el año, right? So you can say, um, uh, let's see, what can I tell you over there? Right? COVID-19 started in 2020, right? Or in 2019, you, 2019 actually, right? Yeah, it was in December, okay? Puede decir de una sola vez el año, right? Because that's what you're talking about, right? Uh, or you can say, I began, come and say, I began to uh, study English uh, six months ago, hace seis meses, Or you can say, uh, si hace el cálculo, no sé, seis meses, uh, last November, right? ¿Verdad? En noviembre, el último noviembre, right? Or in, in, to, in the um, 2020, you can say, right? O sea, al final, el verbo le va a dar el contexto y la expresión de tiempo solo está de complemento, all right? Para enfatizar, okay? But what matters over here is that you have to conjugate the verb. Lo que importa en este, en este tiempo gramatical es que el verbo sí hay que memorizarlo. ¿Ok? You have to memorize the verb. And that is mandatory, right? Si usted, por ejemplo, dice, I eat three pupusas, por así decirlo, ¿no? I eat three pupusas in the morning, y ya sabemos que usted está hablando en la tarde, ya estamos en la noche, ¿verdad? A punto de terminar la clase. Si yo le digo, ¿verdad? Eh, yo quiero decir, me comí un dólar de pupusas en la mañana, right? Si le digo el verbo en presente, pero lo ocupo una expresión, ¿verdad? Que hace referencia al pasado, usted me va a entender. Pero gramaticalmente no está bien. So you have to say, I ate uh, pupusas in the morning, right? Or yesterday morning, ¿ok? O sea, tiene que ir la expresión de tiempo y el verbo conjugado, right? That's what you have to do, ¿ok? Um, but let's continue over here, all right? Teacher. Yes. Eh, solo me quedó una pequeña duda. Eh, ¿Cómo entonces se traduce last? Porque parece que dijo que ago eh, era periodo corto y, y last son periodos largos. O... No, de hecho, ambos son con, con periodos cortos o, o, o largos, pero ago es como usted puede jugar con minutos, horas, días, meses, años. Ok, with anything. Puede decir que con cualquier periodo de tiempo, ago. Porque digamos que usted dice, ok, yo almorcé hace cinco minutos. Usted dice, I had lunch five minutes ago, right? I had lunch five minutes ago, right? Eh, digamos que usted comenzó um, um, con last night, right? Con last night. Eh, con, no, digamos, empezó a trabajar en la empresa. Usted puede decir, yo comencé a trabajar en la empresa hace un año. I started working at the company a year ago. Hace un año. A year ago. Ok. Con, con last, usted está haciendo como específico, como el día, si fue fin de semana o, o cuestiones así, pero significa pasado, de verdad, el fin de semana pasado, dice uno, ok, o el último sábado, ok. Así sería como la traducción. Por ejemplo, yo sé, I went to the supermarket last Saturday, de verdad, fui al super, ¿verdad? El sábado pasado, ok, o el último sábado. That's how you translate it, ok. 
Yes. Okay, gracias. You're welcome. So uh, let's continue over here. And this is the structure that I was talking to you about. So in here, we have a combination of regular and uh, irregular verse. So we have, I study on Sunday, you watch TV, she stayed home, we shopped for groceries and they exercised on Saturday. And the negative form is, ahorita solamente estoy leyendo, right? So I'm just reading. I didn't study on Saturday, you didn't watch the movie, she didn't stay out, we didn't shop for clothes, they didn't exercise. The contraction is didn't, and then the non-contraction form or the complete form is did not. And you see at the end, you have the time expressions. And over here, you have the spelling, tenemos el deletreo, you have stay becomes stayed, watch becomes watched, exercise becomes exercised, study becomes studied, and shop, shopped. Si ustedes se fijan, ok, ya eché de ver que esos son verbos regulares y los, la terminación es distinta, right? Ok, no digo en todos, yo no voy a decir stay it, watch it, exercise it, study it, shop it. Never say that, please. Mejor dígalo en presente, ¿verdad? Que se le va a camuflajear en la oración y con una expresión de tiempo a que digamos el verbo eh, que se note que diga, oh no, lo dijo de una forma errónea, ok. That's my suggestion. If you're not 100% sure, eh, maquíllelo. Si puedo ocupar ese, esa, 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 esa expresión, maquille, ¿verdad? Lo que usted va a decir con una expresión de tiempo para que la gente pueda entenderle el mensaje que usted le está tratando de decir. ¿Ok? Por, por una casualidad, usted se le olvidó el verbo en pasado, por lo menos dígale la expresión de tiempo y la gente le va a entender. Créame, se va a dar a entender. Y poco a poco usted va a ir corrigiendo la cuestión de pronunciación y del verbo en pasado. ¿Ok? ¿Verdad? Y es normal, ¿verdad? Eh, que si no nos acordamos del verbo como es. So, to give you some examples over here. I studied on Sundays. What's the structure? What's the formula? We have the subject. ¿Cuál es la fórmula? ¿Verdad? We have the subject. Y aquí el, el um, verbo independientemente. Y voy a decirlo así. So categorically, so it doesn't matter if you're talking about he, she, or we, it's the same. Imagínense que en estos ejemplos fuera el verbo estudiar. I study, you study, she study, we study, they study. Es el mismo spelling, es el mismo deletreo para todos los verbos. Okay? The same thing over there. Eh, lo que le estoy diciendo es que si usted ocupa un X verbo y lo dice con cualquier persona, no por eso lo va a conjugar de otra forma. ¿Ok? Hay ciertas reglas para conjugar verbos. En el caso de, por ejemplo, los que terminan en Y como study. Si usted se fija, le cambiamos la Y por I latina y le agregamos ED. Pero esto es porque son verbos regulares. Ya vamos a llegar específicamente cuáles son los verbos regulares y las cuestiones de pronunciación. ¿Ok? But we have the affirmative statements, right? So we have affirmative statements over here. Afirmativo over here, right? So we have affirmative statements. Okay, and then over here we have the negative statements. My suggestions, my friends, is that when you speak, use contractions. Cuando usted hable, por favor, ocupe contracciones, ¿verdad? No me vaya a decir, I did not study. Si usted quiere enfatizar, sí me va a decir, I did not study, right? But if you're just speaking, uh, to speak fluently, just say, I didn't, 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 right? Positivo es, you know, positive, I studied on Saturday. Negative, I didn't study. Positive, you watch TV. And negative, I didn't watch a movie. She stayed home. She didn't stay out. We shopped for groceries. We didn't shop for clothes. They exercised on Saturday. They didn't exercise on Sunday. Okay? Entonces, pongámosle cuidado que en negativo, el verbo mantiene su forma básica. All right? You say, I didn't watch. I didn't stay. I didn't shop. Over there. Okay? Um, we're going to try to do this together. I'm going to help you with this exercise. So he says, hagamos el ejercicio que está acá. All right. Entonces, la fórmula en pasado es igual que cualquier tiempo gramatical, right? En inglés así se mantiene. So, subject, all right, plus the verb, plus complement, all right? It's the same thing. And for negative, it's the same thing, actually. You know, it's the subject plus 
the auxiliary, all right? Plus the auxiliary. Um, plus not contract contracted, right? So you have to use not, um, and then you have the complement over there. It's the same thing over there. And just make sure, I'm sorry, and then uh, over here, of course, you, you need the verb. Vamos a hacerlo de una forma más ordenada por acá. Más adelante, all right? So uh, that's it. Entonces, lo único que tú tiene, usted tiene que recordar este en negativo, eh, utiliza el auxiliar contractado con not, study, perdón, didn't, and then the verb never changes. Y no va a cambiar el verbo. Ok. You have to be careful. En, en, en affirmative, ahí tenemos que pronunciar bien las terminaciones de los verbos si son regulares, como en este caso, ¿verdad? Todos son regulares. Studied, watched, stayed, shopped, en exercise. ¿Cómo identifica si un verbo es es regular, primero tuvo que haberlo visto usted, ¿verdad? Y que alguien le haya dicho usted buscarlo y que le digan este es regular. O, o lo otro, si usted ya se fijó de que aparece el verbo conjugado con ED, ok, that's a regular verb. Así se identifican los verbos, con una ED al final, ok, in past tense. All right? Y usted necesita saber si es regular o irregular cuando usted habla acerca del pasado, ok. Si usted habla acerca del futuro, eso es irrelevante, si es regular o irregular. It doesn't really matter. Okay, so let's do this exercise, my friend. So um, Tim is talking about his weekend, complete the sentences, then compare with a partner, right? This is going to be a challenge. I'm going to do it, uh, let's see, orally, and then I'm going to ask you to do it in a breaker room, all right? But I will do it orally for you, and you just need to follow what I'm saying over here. So this is going to be your task right now because we need to go Little by little, step by step. Yo lo voy a hacer de forma verbal, ¿verdad? O una forma hablada. I won't write anything. No voy a escribir nada. Okay. And then I will send you to a breakout room so you can do this and practice with your classmates over there. Okay. Por lo menos sígame la pista, por favor, de lo que yo voy a estar diciendo. Okay. Ya, ya vamos a llegar a la parte de explicación, un poquito más detallado de la pronunciación. So, on Friday night, I waited for a phone call by my girlfriend didn't call. I just stayed home and watched TV. On Saturday, I visited my friend Frank. We talked and listened to music. In the evening, he invited some friends and we cooked a great meal. I didn't work very hard on Sunday. I didn't study at all. I just walked to the mall and shopped. All right. Let me ask you, are, are all these verbs regular or do we have an irregular verb? Y esto les pregunto en general. ¿Será que todos los verbos en, en este eh, ejemplo son regulares o tenemos un verbo irregular por ahí? Are all these verbs regular or do we have an irregular verb over here? Remember that to identify a regular verb, the, the uh, writing or the spelling is ed at the end, ¿verdad? Para identificarlo en forma escrita, usted tiene ed al final del verbo, okay? Pero en yes, este caso, teacher. so all of them are regular. That's what you're saying, Ms. Carmen. Um, you have wait, call, watch, visit, yes. talk. Talk. Which one? Talk. Talk. All right, talk. talk. Okay, talk. Um, no, talk. Yeah. Ed, 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 right? Yeah. Yes, <laughs> yeah. yeah. right. only shop if you have to add ed. But yeah, right. Only, right. Uh, right. Yeah, you're right. Uh, so what we're going to do is the following. All right, you're you're gonna help me with with the following over here, right? Let me stop sharing this screen and I will, I will send to you a, this screen, right? This screen. Voy a mandar esta, esta eh, diapositiva al chat. And what I want you to help me with is to tell me the verse that appear in the, uh, you know, in this paragraph. Quiero que por favor me dicten uno a uno, verdad? Sin repetir los verbos que están ahí. Eh, in example, you know, in present tense, all right? 
in present tense. Maybe just uh, one person, please, who can give me the, the list of verbs over there. Solo diga, lo que vamos a hacer ahorita, díganme la lista de los verbos que están ahí. O lo voy a ocupar para dar el, las reglas de las cuestiones de pronunciación o de escritura, ¿verdad? De spelling. All right. Somebody can help me, please. All right. Thank you, Miss Carmen. Um, all right. And I'm going to write a number over there. So let's begin, please. Number one. What is it? Miss Carmen, go ahead, please. I'm sorry. Do you, do you want a spelling or? No, no. Just tell me the verse over there. We're gonna do ah, a, We're gonna wait. do this. Yeah. Wait. All right. Wait. wait. Okay. Another one, please. Uh, call it. Cold. Okay. Next one. Okay. Hold on. Because. You're breaking up, ¿verdad? Como que se, se está cortando mi, mi, mi... Okay. Okay, the other one you said? Stay. Stay, right, yeah, correct. And then we have... Watch. Watch, okay. Watch. Watch, all right. Visit. Visit, okay. Talk. Talk, all right. Listen. Listen, okay. Invite. Invite. Cook. Cook. Work. Work. Study. Study. Walk. Walk. Shop. And shop. All right, so we have 13 verbs over here. So uh, to most of them, you just need to add ED, right? And that's what I'm gonna do right now. To most of them, we just add ED. I'm gonna make this screen a little bit bigger, all right? A la gran mayoría de ustedes, a los verbos regulares, le va a agregar ED. Okay, that's it. Like in the case of wait, you just add ed. Y yo voy a, yo voy a, a pronunciar la terminación, ¿verdad? Y después le voy a explicar por qué es que se pronuncia de esa forma. Tal vez no alcanzamos hoy, pero comenzamos con eso mañana. So this is waited, 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 waited. Es como una i chiquita, you know, waited. Puede decir waited or waited, ¿verdad? Es como una e i, waited. Si lo dice como e, está bien, waited. Okay, you say cold, stayed. Voy a, voy a exagerar, ¿verdad? La pronunciación, okay? Para que usted vaya diferenciando qué pronuncio, qué sonido voy haciendo ahí. So, waited, sorry, waited, cold, stayed, watched, visited, talked, Listened. Lo estoy pronunciando así, ¿verdad? Exageradamente. Solo para que usted se fije. Invited. Solo le agregamos la D, right? Because you have the E already. Cooked. Worked. Studied. Si termina en Y, la regla, la regla dice que cambiamos eso. And then we change it and we add ED over there. All right? Studied. And this is just the spelling, right? What I'm telling you right now. Walk, it becomes walked, right? Just like that. And then shop. Si está como una, el, la regla dice que si está consonante, vocal, consonante y la SH por cuestiones de sonido solo se considera como una consonante. Okay, el que dice usted, shh, 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 shh. Ese, ¿verdad? So that is just only one sound. So it's, Consonante, vocal, consonante. So, consonant, vowel, consonant. Repetimos o duplicamos la consonante final and we say shopped. All right? Just like that. Por eso es que shopping se escribe con doble P. Yes, Mr. Caesar. Go ahead. En el caso de stay y de study, eh, la variación es porque lleva consonante, bueno, en el caso de stage lleva primero la vocal y luego la, 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 la tía, digamos, uh -huh. y solo le agregamos ed, y en el caso de study es porque va la consonante antes y luego la tía también. Esa sí. es la variación por la que eh, en el caso de study se sustituye la, por la i. Sí, sí, y otra, otra razón quizás un poquito más de peso es que 
en state, la Y tiene la función de una consonante, ¿verdad? Entonces eh, es como agregada. En cambio, en study, la Y sirve como vocal. ¿Ok? Study. Okay. ¿Verdad? En cambio, en state ya tenemos la A. Right? Y ahí en realidad es un dictongo el que tenemos, porque tenemos la A y la stay, A, A. En cambio, en study, ¿verdad? La, la Y es, un, es una... O sea, la función es como una vocal, por eso es que la cambiamos. Right? Study. Ok, thank okay. you. Yes, sir. All right. Uh, so, confuso. excuse me. It's confused. Confuso. Yeah, it's confused. But at least, bueno, si, si digamos las reglas nos van a confundir, y eso es normal, Mr. Tony, right, Alfonso, um, try to memorize the spelling of the verb. Por lo menos memorizémonos. Y son poquitos los verbos, ¿verdad? Que nos van a meter en problemas. You know, just, you know, very few verbs. Okay. This is just the spelling, my friends. This is just the spelling, all right, of the verse which you're going to be uh, working on over there. But uh, in a couple of slides, we will cover that pronunciation. ¿Verdad? Y no es por alarmarlos ni nada, ¿verdad? Pero sí tenemos mucho trabajo que hacer en el sentido de que el spelling, de repente, eh, se nos va, ¿verdad? O, o si lo hace usted en línea o digital, se lo corrige, ¿verdad? <laughs> el, el, el software. Pero la cuestión de hablar, eh, ahí sí tiene que aprenderse, ¿verdad? Y tiene que ser un poquito más pulcro en la pronunciación. All right? So you need to be a little bit more, I would say, precise with your pronunciation. This is just the spelling. Okay? Um, so, it's 9.52 right now. We're going to go back to this exercise in a second, right? We're going to go back to that exercise in a second. Okay? So, the past tense, all right? The past tense is used to talk about completed actions or completed events. Para que utilizamos el, el pasado. Todo mundo, verdad, sabemos. We watched a really good game. I went to Nepal for a year. I played tennis when I was a kid. They bought a new house. Compraron una nueva casa. Fueron a Nepal. Okay. Point number two. In affirmative sentences, use the past tense form of the verb which is often as an ed end. Lo que le está diciendo la regla número dos o el punto dos es que la gran mayoría, mayoría de verbos son regulares. All right? Regular verbs. So it's an obligation, if I can say that, to learn the spelling and the pronunciation of regular verbs. Es obligación, ¿verdad? Y necesario aprenderse cómo se deletrea y cómo se pronuncia el verbo regular. ¿Ok? El spelling es fácil, ¿verdad? A usted a solo le agrego ed. Y como dice usted, hay que galán, ¿verdad? Pero la pronunciación es lo que a veces se dificulta un poquito. Pero yo le voy a dar un par de tips y, y, y recomendaciones para que maquillemos o cam camuflajemos y que no se, se nos esconda la pronunciación, ¿verdad? Final, LD, en medio de toda la oración, ¿ok? I promise you that. So I'm going to help you with that. So, point number four. Yo sé que aquí es, tendría que ser el punto número tres. But in this case, it's point number four. Many verbs have an irregular form that is not an ed ending, but rather a special spelling. Y algunos verbos, o quizás muchos verbos, ¿verdad? No son regulares. Todo lo contrario, ¿verdad? Right? Irregular verbs. Y ahí sí, you have to memorize them, right? You have to memorize them. So, aquí es pura memoria, right? Or practice. Or a combination of both, ¿verdad? Okay, I met Joe last night. Meet becomes met. Have had, eat, y aquí vamos a darle como un consejo de pronunciación para el verbo comer, all right, y esto todo mundo se lo va a decir así, como el número 8 lo vamos a pronunciar comer en pasado, ok, I ate their pasta, ok, como si usted estuviera diciendo el número 8, ate, I ate their pasta, y el, el deletreado la, o la escritura, usted le va a dar vuelta a todo eso. Escribe ate, you know, ate, you pronounce it. All right? A-T-E, right? We ate their pasta. Okay. Later, we saw, saw, saw a movie, right? So, de hecho, hay una película, si lo pone usted en mayúscula, S-A-W, S-A-W, it's a movie, right? It's a horror movie, right? It's a horror movie. But in that case, it's C becomes so. It made me cry. Make becomes made. He bought, bought. 
la U no la va a pronunciar ni la GH. Right? Eso solamente nos, nos pone en problemas en el deletreo. Pero en inglés le voy a decir que la, la, las tres letras, la GHT, son bien comunes. Right? GHT is, is a very com, common, common combination. So he bought dinner, so I paid for the movie, ¿verdad? Tenemos pay and paid. Esto es pagar en pasado. Pagué o pagaron. Conocí a Joe. Eh, cené en el restaurante. Comí pasta. Miré una película. Me hizo llorar. Compré la cena y pagué por la película. Ok, you're talking about a date, right? Está hablando acerca de una cita. I would say that, right? <laughs> Yeah, that is a day, right? So those are uh, the, the things that people do in a date. Yeah, I can see that. Okay. Uh, any questions so far? Okay. Any questions so far? All right. Um, let me just, Miss Sulma, do you have any questions? Um, Mr. Edwin, just to ask you about her. Por el momento no tengo bien clara la pregunta, dice, porque, ¿cómo le explico? Todavía no me he empapado muy bien de eso, entonces no, 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 no sabría cómo preguntarle. That's okay, that's okay. Sí, ahorita solo es cuestión de, de introducción, ya vamos a practicar. Practicando vamos a entender un poquito más esto. All right. So, um, but what you have to understand uh, for this class is that we have regular verbs, and when you write them down, Uh, you just need to add ed to most of them okay and you have irregular verbs uh, which you have to actually change the spelling all right for example meet in pasado se escribe met okay have in pasado se escribe had y eso es lo que usted tiene que recordar eh, eat se escribe ate etc voy a compartirles algo verdad ya con esto creo que nos vamos a, a, a despedir all right because we only have three more minutes. Uh, I think like two days ago, I shared with you a list of verbs. And uh, what, I'm, what I'm asking you right now is to keep on making the list bigger. Hace un par de días les compartí una lista de verbos, ¿verdad? Entonces, la idea es que usted siga construyendo la, la lista de verbos con base a, a eso que le compartí, ¿verdad? Aquí está. De hecho, lo compartí en formato eh, Word, en formato PDF, y se los puedo volver a mandar una vez más. Eh, en ese momento yo les compartí solamente los verbos que habíamos estado viendo, porque yo no creo en la cuestión de mandarles 50 verbos. Ahí tengo una gran lista de verbos, y ya van a ver, solamente se las voy a mostrar en la pantalla para, para que miren que no, no les estoy mintiendo. Entonces, si yo les mando esto, se me van a frustrar, o si usted me dice, mándemela, yo la voy a tener como, como, como referencia, yo se los puedo mandar. Pero yo lo que quiero hacer es mandar los, 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 una lista de verbos que vayamos viendo en los ejercicios para que sea algo real, pues, que usted se va a aprender. ¿Ok? You see, this is the, the, the regular verse. It's 12 pages long. Can you see? Can you see? And then we have the irregular verse. Para consulta le puede servir, ¿verdad? Para no andar buscando en otro lado. If you want me to share this with you, I can do it, all right? I can do it. But you see, it's too long, right? Imagine, antes a uno le decían, ¿verdad? A, a, a mí me pidieron, memorícese un montón de verbos y ese va a ser el examen parcial. <laughs> okay, that's going to be the oral evaluation. Así nos hacían los parciales, me acuerdo. All right? Um, okay, uh, you see this ones, right? De hecho, un profesor me compartió esta en el 2008, si no estoy equivocado, all right? Back in 2008, 2007. Okay. A mí me uh, gustaría tenerlo, teacher. No sé si sería posible que lo sí, enviara. Y ahí... sí. uh -huh. Vaya, solamente aclaración, ¿verdad? El infinitivo es como el presente o la forma básica del verbo. The past, this is the one that you're going to be using, you know, for this class. And then you have the, the participle, es el participio, el que ocupamos para la voz pasiva. Okay. So that's the one over there. And then we have the, the meaning of, of, of this, right? Or the translation. Okay, and then the, um, that's it. And on page number five, we start with the regular verbs. Y aquí están, they are organized in alphabetical order. Están en, 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 en orden alfabético. You see, muchos de estos no se ocupan, la verdad, fíjense. Become, yes, begin. Eh, uh, 
let's see, break, yeah, you use it, bring, uh, build, buy, catch, choose, esos son bien comunes, come, cost, cat, eh, do, all right? Do es un verbo también normal como cualquier otro y también es, es um, un verbo eh, auxiliar. No sé si ya se fijaron que ahí está más o menos la pronunciación a la par de esa lista. ¿Ya? Yeah? You have the pronunciation over there, right? No es como los tomos de, de, a veces de océano, ¿verdad? Nos aparecían por ahí, ¿verdad? Cuando uno aprendía inglés a distancia, por ahí. So, cats and everything. Yes, I'm going to share this with you, all right? I think that's a good idea. Okay, esto es como para que usted la tenga de consulta, but the one that we're supposed to be working on es esto, mire. Esto es lo que yo quiero... Perdón. Eh, ¿Qué función dijo que, cum que cumplía el pasado simple? El infinitivo dijo que era el presente, ¿verdad? Sí, ¿El aquí pasado está, simple? El pasado simple es para lo que estamos viendo ahorita, para el pasado, neto, ¿verdad? El pasado. Eh, acciones completas, completadas. Y el participio. El participio es para voz pasiva. Para la voz pasiva, correcto. Yes. All right. mm, okay. Entonces, nosotros ahorita nos enfocamos en la segunda columna. All right? So, in the second column. Vamos a aprendernos el pasado, accepted, base, borrow, etc. La ventaja con los verbos regulares es que el mismo pasado es el mismo participio. All right? Same thing. Okay. Pero con los irregulares, algunos de ellos cambian. For example, if you write, if you write, uh, uh, eat is ate in past, right? And in participio, right? Participle is eaten. Like this, right? Entonces, les voy a compartir eh, la versión de, de verbos completos donde van a estar todos los regulares y la gran mayoría de irregulares y la otra tablita en, en, en formato Word o, o en PDF que usted va a ir construyendo con los verbos que vamos viendo en clase. All right? So that's the plan over there. So you're going to have two, two lists over there. Okay? And, and tomorrow, I promise you, that we will start, ya, ya me estoy pasando dos minutos. So tomorrow, I promise you that we will uh, study this, you know? This is the pronunciation of the ED verbs in the uh, regular verse. This is like Chinese, right? Right now, está como en chino esto, right? But I'm gonna explain it to you tomorrow and I'm gonna give you some tips. It looks difficult, but I'm gonna use the same advice that one of my teachers gave you. I mean, gave me, okay? So, hope to see you tomorrow. Uh, and according to the list, the person that it's supposed to stay today is in the 101. Uh, bueno, ya me despido y uh, let's see who needs to stay. Uh, Miss Evelyn Patricia, can you stay? If you're, uh, if you're around. Teacher, a mí se me cayó el inter. Okay. Y es... Eh, ya con poco inter ya mejor right. si si se puede mañana o, yeah. o me reprograma porque yeah. si te, no tengo suficiente inter yeah let's leave it for tomorrow but still I have uh, an spot available bueno me despido de los demás eh, but who wants to stay over here who wants to stay goodbye goodbye bye see yes. you tomorrow good night good night, good night. Good night. bye guys good night bye, bye. Uh, Miss Miss Ulma, uh, would you like to stay, or you left already? She left already, All right? See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow, sir. Mr. Gilberto, do you have do you have time for the one on one, sir, or not? Thank you.